we're, 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 we're so busy trying to become something that we're not. God is saying, show me where's the you that I created. Where's the you that I created? Don't let the pressures of life and the pressures of society, the pressures of social media, the pressures of trying to keep up with the Joneses, the pressure of trying to stay with the status quo, don't let those pressures change the character that you are. Don't let the pressures cause you to do things uncharacteristic of who God created you to be. Have you ever faced a situation where you were asked to do something that was against the word of God, against your belief, against your faith, and you felt the pressure of life? Now, pressure is not the problem. Pressure is not the issue. It's how we react when under pressure. You see, pressure can either crush you to dust or turn you into a diamond. The pressure is not the issue. It's how we react when under pressure. Consider it all joy, my brethren, for trials produce patience. I, 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 Lord, I, I don't want to lack anything. So this trial that I'm in, Father, lead me. Walk with me. It says that there was a fourth in there that looked like a God. Know that God will never leave nor forsake me. That even when you're in the fire, God is about to do something crazy. He's about to do something miraculous. God is setting you up every small victory. Every time you take a stand, every time you take a stand, you say, no, that's not right. I'm going to stand on Christ and his principles and his morals. I'm going to stand. Every time we make that decision, God is strengthening our faith. Every time we take a stand and we stand away from the crowd and we say, I'm not going to follow the crowd. I'm going to follow you, Jesus. When I'm confident in who I am, I know who I am in Christ. When I'm thrown into the fire, it says that the Lord will cause us to be unbound, to cause us to be set free, to cause us to walk and to flourish in the flame. He will cause us to walk and to flourish in the flame. That's the kind of God that we serve. All these little victories set up for this miracle where now Nebuchadnezzar's like, everyone worship that God. Yes, church service. Church service. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> What's up, New Hope family? My name is Brother Elijah, and I just want to welcome you all to our service. Hey, if you are tuning in online, let us know in the comment section below of where you're tuning in from. Hey, subscribe while you at it. Now, let's take a look at what's happening here while you are settling in.
Well, hey, now that you are all caught up, I just want to invite you to sing and shout your praises to God for sending his one and only begotten son, although Jesus knew the plans that were going to happen. He came willingly to sacrifice himself for our sin. Now that is the greatest love story of all. Ooh, Holy Spirit, come and fill this place. If you have hands, let them clap. If you have feet, let them stop. We're about to get a worship on in three, three, two, one.
you and I. If you say victory will come by our faith, we believe is done. We receive it, yes, we, we receive it. So lift your worship. So we will praise you in advance. better place to be on a Wednesday night they're here in his presence hallelujah mm. father we acknowledge your presence yeah Can I encourage you today? When you wait on the Lord, good things happen. Ugh. Just plain and simple. Just plain and simple. Hmm. There's not a mountain that's too tall. So small that Jesus can't resolve. All times he'll get involved. It's our God, he cares about us. Sing this out. Sing well. Wait on 
some things, and I know he has. I know he has done it for you. He is going to do it again. Somebody lift up some praise. There is victory on the end of that shout. There is victory at the end of that praise. You just got to give it all up. The enemy is forced to listen to you when you give him a shout of praise. You give him praise. The enemy's plans are disrupted. Oh my, the spirit of the Lord is here. Shout out. Father, let me compose myself. We're going to praise until 10 o'clock. Just kidding. But you are so good, Father. And we understand that when we wait on you, because we know that you know the plans. Oh, and the fact that you have plans for us. The fact that we have the privilege that when you said in Matthew chapter 8, that you said the Lord has need of it. But we know, Lord, that you don't need none of us. You are almighty already. You are all powerful already. You are sovereign. You are omnipotent. But the fact that you said that you need us, Lord, Father, God, I will praise you because I have the privilege and honor to pray. Oh, somebody, come on. Woo. Father, we acknowledge it that our patience for your plans is nothing but goodness for us. The book of Isaiah says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I make a way through the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So when you believe that you are in the wilderness, when you think you are in the wasteland, just know that it must bow down to him. Ugh. You just got to wait on him. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you are good and your mercy endureth forever and your unconditional love shines through on us, in us, and through us, Lord Father God. We thank you that you are almighty and that we don't serve just a God that's confined to two walls. We don't serve a God that is confined to a statue, Father. We don't serve a God that is hidden in a jar. Lord Father, we serve the God of the universe, the creator, and we acknowledge that tonight, Lord Father God. We acknowledge how awesome you are. And Father, we invite you in. We invite you into our lives. Not just to here right now. We invite you here, but we invite you into our lives. And that when we leave this place, when we leave this holy ground, that you don't stay here, Lord Father. We invite you into our lives that when we carry out to our homes, to our workplaces, to wherever, to the gym, to the cafe, to Starbucks, wherever we go, Father, we pray that you continue to shine in us so that others may see you through us, Lord Father God. Oh, we thank, I thank you, Father, for all the things that you, oh, Lord. I could stay here for hours and hours talking about who you are and what you've done for me. Hey. But we just want to say thank you and you are mighty. And because of that, Lord Father God, we ask that you speak through our speaker tonight, the anointed man of God, the anointed and appointed man of God, so that we may hear your voice and hear the message that you have for us today. Lord, Father God, we pray all of these things in the mighty and matter.
matchless name that is Jesus Christ. We say amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give it up for Las Vegas finest praise and worship team. Please be seated as our ushers go around and collect our tithes and offerings. Welcome everyone to our midweek service. For those of you joining us on live stream and jo those joining us here in person for the first time, welcome. Hope you enjoy service and please come back again soon. I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. First off, for those of you who donated your precious life-saving blood last week, thank you. The final counts didn't come in yet, but our count for pints of blood that was donated came out to be 45 pints of blood, which has the potential of saving 45 people, everyone. Praise the Lord. Another thing worth praising about is the 10 kids that were dedicated last week. Thank you to the parents who took the step of faith and bring their kids to be dedicated. Praise the Lord. Did you know we have a motorcycle ministry? Well, yes, we do. Our Faith Attic Motorcycle Ministry will be having an outdoor outreach event this coming Friday. It will be in collaboration with world-renowned reggae Christian artist, Christafari. And the Spirit of Kindness Ministry will also be there. So please come join us. If you're available, it's this Friday at 7 p.m. The address, I believe, is 6731 West Alexander here in Las Vegas. It's going to be a fun night. This coming Sunday is Palm Sunday. For the very first time in one year, New Hope Las Vegas will be opening for all three services. Praise the Lord. That's right. Our 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 12 noon service will be open for all in-person services. But that's not it. We have a guest speaker that day, former New Hope Las Vegas associate pastor, and now current senior pastor of Hope Chapel, Kona, Pastor Bam will be in the house that day. We will also have Holy Spirit baptism that day as well. The following week will be Easter Sunday, also called Resurrection Sunday. Those two days, Resurrection Sunday and, e and Palm Sunday, will be a busy week. It's going to be packed. It's going to be a packed house. And COVID is still in effect, so you need to register to attend. So if you're a procrastinator like me, I suggest you register early so you can get a seat. Amen? Last but not least, water baptism is in session. So if you're interested in getting water baptized, please see any of our Victory Group leaders and they can give you more detail. If you are not connected to a Victory Group or you don't, you don't know what that is, come see me after service and I'll connect you. If you're on our live stream and you'd like to be water baptized, please type in water baptized and someone will connect with you soon. Amen. Now this time we'll be uh, doing our tithes and offerings. In the chair pockets in front of you, of you, there is a QR code. So simply scan your phone there and follow the directions. If you're old school, you can put in your checks or your cash in the envelopes and give it to our ushers or put it in the connections counter. Drop it off over there on your way out. For those of you on live stream, there's a give link. You can give there and follow the instructions. Amen. Ushers, please come forward so we can pray for our tithes and offerings. Everyone, please join me and stand in agreement as we pray for our tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, and glorify you for this blessed time and opportunity you've given us, Lord God, just to give back what rightfully belongs to you. We acknowledge, Father God, that our tithes is a measure of our obedience to you as our offerings is a measure of our generosity to you. May you use our tithes and offerings for your storehouse. 
but especially to expand your kingdom. We pray this in your mighty and matchless name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Everyone, if you could please stand with me as we give a warm New Hope Las Vegas welcome to our speaker of the night, Pastor Hanale, a.k.a. Jason. Thank you, Pastor Roger. Thank you so much. Hey, New Hope, we got a busy couple weeks coming up, and we are so excited that you have the opportunity to join us in person and also live. There's so many things that are going on. If you have any questions, please check us online at newhopelasvegas.com or see us at our connections counter, and that way we can answer any of the questions that we may have for you. But I'm so excited. Resurrection Sunday, what a great day, and I'm so excited that we get to do it in person this year because God is good, right? Ah, awesome. So let's declare our faith. Everybody pick up your Bibles. Everybody at home, how you doing? Pick up your Bibles. Like I always say, get off the couch or get off the toilet, wherever you're at. You're going to hold up your Bibles tonight, and we're going to declare our faith as a church family. On the count of three, you guys ready? One, two, three. God is who he says he is. God can do what he says he can do. I am who God says I am. I can do all things through Christ, and God's word is alive and active in me. Amen, amen, amen. Have a seat, have a seat. And you hope, let's give the uh, worship team another round of applause. So good, I love it. And Pastor Roger is right. We have one of the best worship teams. They're truly anointed, and they're led by an amazing pastor, Pastor Austin. So we are so thankful and blessed as a church that we get to worship and usher in the spirit with this talent. And it's so good, and we're so thankful tonight. But how's everybody doing tonight? Very good? Oh, it's so good to be in here. It's always an honor and privilege uh, to have the opportunity to share the word of God with you tonight. The good thing is, like Pastor Austin says, I don't have a word, but God does. Right? And before we go, let's pray tonight. Right? Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for another wonderful night, Father God. Thank you for the opportunity that we just get to gather in your presence, Father. There's no place that we would rather be than in your presence. So we thank you for that, Father God. I pray that you open and soften our hearts tonight for the word that you have prepared, that we can learn how to renew our strength in you, Father God, because you are the source of all things. But Father God, we love you, we thank you, and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. I'm going to start off tonight, and I'm going to tell you something. Life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Okay? Repeat it one more time just in case you didn't hear it. Life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. But many of us treat the things in our life like a sprint. For example, is this. As soon as I wake up from bed, I sprint to get ready for work. And then once I'm ready, I sprint off to work. As soon as I get to work, I sprint and I start doing things that I need to do at work. I immediately check my emails. I go from meeting to meeting, from task to task. And that's my sprint all day long. But it's not over yet. Once I continue, <laughs> once I finish with work, I have to sprint home because I got like eight kids at home that I got to take care of. <laughs> I don't have eight, actually three, but. <laughs> I sprint home to take care of the kids. But then I got to sprint because I got to take them to soccer practice, baseball practice, karate practice, jujitsu practice, violin practice, whatever practices that they have, I got to sprint off to that. Right after that, I'm done with that. Now I gotta sprint back home. I gotta go sprint back home and cook dinner for everybody. Once I'm done cooking dinner, now I gotta sprint and I gotta give them a bath. Eight kids is a lot of baths, a lot of homework that I gotta do. I'm always constantly sprinting. We treat our life as a sprint, but our, day, our night's not over yet. Once I put the kids to sleep, guess what I gotta do? I gotta sprint off and do some ministry work because that's the only time I got left. I'm typing away on my emails. I'm so busy sprinting throughout the day, I even sprint brush my teeth. No laugh. Some of us, you need to brush your teeth for about 30 seconds. You're lucky that toothpaste touch your teeth at all because you're sprinting so fast. We treat our life as a sprint. But then when I finally get to lay down in bed, what happens next? My mind is sprinting about everything I have to do the next day. Life is not a sprint. It is a marathon, but we constantly treat our life like a sprint all the time. And if we continue this cycle of sprinting through life, what is going to happen? When I went to bed the next night because I didn't get a full night's rest, when I finally actually get up, now my battery's low. I'm not 
fully charged because I've been sprinting all day the day before. And if I constantly do that every day because I don't get enough rest, I am going to burn out. You will burn out. Your battery will run dry. Your battery will go dead. Life is not a sprint. It is a marathon. Especially me. I don't like sprinting at all. I hate running. Any type of cardiovascular stuff is not for me. I think running is from the devil, actually. I believe God has only given me so many heartbeats. And every time I run, I use more heartbeats. So I don't like running. But life is not a sprint, but we treat it as a sprint. It's a marathon. It takes time. There's a lot of things that we have to do. We cannot treat it like that. I don't know about you, but when my batteries are low, I kind of get irritated pretty quick. Right? The little comments set me off. I take offense easily when my batteries are low because I've been busy sprinting all day long. Life is not a sprint, but we treat it as such. The same principle can apply to our spiritual life. I'm busy running around all day long handling 80 different things, but the same principle can be applied to your spiritual life. When we are on low spiritual strength because we've been busy so long, guess what? That's the time the enemy wants to come in and attack you. The enemy is not going to attack you when you're at full strength. The enemy will come and attack you and your family when you're at low spiritual strength. He will not come when you're at full strength. Why? Because you can't be defeated then. It is when we are low, 50, 20, 30% is when the enemy is going to come because he doesn't have to really work that hard. The enemy is very strategic. If you didn't know, that guy's pretty smart. He knows when to attack you, and he's going to attack you when you're most vulnerable. And when is that? When your batteries are low because you guys have been in a spiritual sprint all day long. Same principle applies. And when he attacks you, he doesn't have to do much. He just lobs little pebbles at you. Condemnation. Offense. And you just fall right over. Because you're at low spiritual strength. And we cannot do that. Because you are at a sprint all day long. You know, the book of, he- yeah, the book of Ephesians says this. Um, we do not fight or wrestle with um, principalities of the unseen world. Right? We don't. We don't see those. That's why you guys need to build up spiritually. And that is what I'm going to talk to you about tonight. And the title of tonight's message is this, is renewing your strength. Renewing your strength. We need to constantly renew not just our physical strength, but our spiritual strength. So what? So why? So we can withstand all the attacks of the devil. That is why. But we need to renew our strength. The reality of life is this. We can grow weary and grow weak because we're human. That's the reality of life. A lot of us don't forget that we're Christians. We forget that we're human. We don't forget that we're Christians. We forget that we are human. And God knew that our strength would not remain constant. He knew that. He knows that. And it will diminish over time. It will diminish over time. And the lead scripture for tonight's message is from Isaiah 40, 31, and it says this. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They they shall mount up like wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. The strength of our spiritual and physical lives are based on our eternal batteries that we have inside. Just like our cell phones. We all have one of these. Everybody has one now. Before I had, we had the big fat ones and the flip-flop ones. But now we all got these smart iPhones. We all have these. And the capabilities and what I can do on this phone is only based on its battery strength. We all look at this phone, and if I want to know how much battery I have, it's always in the top right-hand corner, and it'll tell you how much battery you have. And based on the battery strength will determine the capabilities that I can use on this phone. That's it. The lower the battery strength, the less things I can do on my phone. If my battery is dead on this phone, it just becomes an expensive paperweight. No matter how many apps, no matter how many songs, no matter how many games, no matter how many uh, social media stuff that I have on my phone, if there's no battery on this phone, this phone is useless. It becomes an expensive 
paperweight. Expensive paperweight. You know, when I constantly use my phone and I look at it, and when I get it to about 20%, it automatically switches me to low, uh, low battery mode. It turns yellow. And what does that do? The phone automatically recognizes that it's low on battery, so it's going to start conserving its energy. And it limits what I can do on my phone. All the other apps that always run in the background that I don't use all the time shuts down. And then when I know that happens is when I need to go get a recharge on my phone. When my batteries are low on my phone, it determines what I can do on my phone. Same principle in your life, your spiritual life, your physical life. When you have a low battery strength, your internal battery is low, you can only do so much. There's only so many things that you can do. You may have the best career, the best family, an amazing ministry, but if your battery is low, you're going to be an expensive paperweight. It doesn't really matter. It all determines on your internal battery strength. And when that happens, it will determine your capabilities that you can do in your life. Same with the phone, same in your spiritual life. If you have a low spiritual battery, you can only do so much. And you're not going to be um, applying yourself to your full capabilities. Right? But the first step to renewing our strength and ensuring our internal battery doesn't go dead is this. Point number one. Find refuge first. Find refuge first first. The Bible says in Psalms 18 too, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. There's a lot of my's in that, in that scripture. My, 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 my. I find assurance because God's talking to me. You should find assurance in that because he's talking to you. He is your stronghold. He is your refuge. He is your rock. He is your fortress. He is your deliverer. You can find assurance in that. That's why we need to find refuge first. God is our refuge. You know, other words that describe uh, refuge is like shelter, sanctuary, protection. Those are all the other words that we use to describe refuge. God is our shelter, God is our protection. God is our sanctuary. Why do we use the word sanctuary a lot? Why? Here? Because it's a safe place. This is where you can be in the covering of God. It's a safe place. This is refuge. That's why we call it a sanctuary. Broken and hurt people come in here to find a safe place, a refuge for protection. That's why you come to church. So you can sit in the sanctuary and be in a safe place and not worry about the enemy attacking you all the time. This is a safe place. This is your sanctuary. That's why we come. But before you can renew your strength, you have to find refuge first. You need a safe place. You need this protection. You need this covering of God before you can renew your strength. You know, a few weeks ago, Pastor Austin, um, and he's always up in his games, right, with visual aids, and he brought in a big umbrella. You guys remember that one? Um, and he talked about God's covering, and I'm just going to tippy toe on that just for a second. And if we look at an umbrella... If I stay under the umbrella, if I stay under the covering of an umbrella and it rains, guess what? I'm not going to get wet. Pretty simple concept. I found protection. I found covering under this umbrella from rain. God's covering works the same way. His refuge is the same way. When we remain under his covering, under his protection, in his refuge, the enemy has no way in. It is only when I remove myself from God's covering and I get away from that, that is when the enemy can attack you. But if I'm in, under refuge in his protection, enemy cannot. God doesn't move. God, people will say, God removed his covering from us. God removed his protection from me. Uh-uh. We removed ourselves. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't move. He's constant. If I know where he is going to be, he will always be there. It is for me that I removed myself from his covering and his protection. He is my refuge. He is your refuge. But we got to find refuge first before we can renew our strength. Find refuge first. 
You have to intentionally seek him out. And that's why some of you are here. That's why some of you come on Sundays. Because you're intentionally seeking a safe place. You're intentionally seeking refuge, covering, and protection. You have to make an intentional effort. You have to do something. You can't just sit there and do nothing. You have to do something. Because God will always be here. Go find refuge. You guys ever seen in the malls or those airports, those uh, recharging battery stations for your phones? You guys ever see those places? Now they're, pop, they're, they're everywhere, right? They're just a little stand. You got a whole bunch of different plugs for everybody's different type of phones. When your battery's low, what are you doing? You're looking for those recharging stations. Like, oh, my battery's low. I got to go look for a recharging station. You're making an intentional effort to recharge the battery on your phone. You're looking around. Or you can find those little millennials looking on the ground trying to find an outlet somewhere on the side of the wall. They're sitting next to some pillar somewhere in the middle of the store. What are they doing? They're looking for an outlet to plug in and charge their phone. They made an intentional effort to search out a recharging source. You have to do the same. You have to make an intentional effort to find that recharging source, which is the refuge, which is God's protection, which is his covering. Make an intentional effort to find it. Because he will be there, and he is faithful to recharge you once you find it. You just have to make an intentional effort to go find it. In order to renew your strength, you must find refuge under God's covering and protection. Just like those cell phone charging stations. Refuge in God's covering is the first place you need to start to renewing your strength. Once you find refuge, you need to understand this concept of point number two is this. You need rest before you can renew. You need rest before you can renew. In the lead scripture, and I'm going to cover it just a little bit more in this one. And, and again, it's Isaiah, but I just added uh, verse 30. It says this. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. The young man shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You all got um, message notes. I want you to do a couple things. First, I want you to circle the word wait and write a big number one next to it. This is your teaching component, right? Then I want you to circle the word, <laughs> circle the word renew and put a big number two next to it. Why? So you know what comes first and what comes second. First, wait. Second, renew. Just so you didn't know, first wait, second, renew. You need to rest before you can renew. Wait, renew. Okay? Now I want you to do something else. I want you to underline all the shells in there, all the word shells. Why did God use the word shell? In these two verses, he uses them six times. So it must be important. When I was reading, I was like, wow, if God repeats something, it's got to be important. And he repeated it six times in those two verses. I didn't catch it at first, but I did now later on. The word shall suggests certainty, that something will happen. The word shall explains, expresses certainty, that this will happen. God is saying to us that those who wait on him, that these certain things will happen. When we wait, we will renew our strength. When we wait, we shall mount up on wings like eagles. When we wait, we shall run and not grow weary. When we wait, we shall walk and not faint. It will happen. This is God's promises to you. He is telling you, if you wait, hold up a little bit, time out, you'll renew your strength. You'll run and not grow weary. You'll walk and not faint. Those are his promises to you. And he's explaining that in the word shall. When we have to wait on the Lord first, then we can renew our strength. 
It's not at the same time, okay? Do one first, and then the second one happen. It's not together. When we wait on the Lord, then we shall renew our strength. That's the second part, right? It's not at the same time. We have to wait first in order to be able to renew our strength. You know, another word that I like to use for wait is rest. That's another fancy word if you put in rest in there. You know, anytime we ever go to the doctor's office and we're in the waiting room, you guys ever been there? Have you ever seen anybody doing like jumping jacks or push-ups or any kind of calisthenics? No, they're sitting down and they are waiting. They're resting. They're not doing anything. I have never been to the doctor's office and seen that. When you are waiting, you're resting. Okay? But a lot of times while we are waiting, we feel the need, we feel the obligation that we got to do something. We get antsy. Just today, my little boy says, I'm bored. Too bad. Wait, we're not going yet. And he got antsy. He feels the need to do something. And a lot of us feel that way. When God tells us to wait and rest, it's like, oh, I got to do something. I have to do something. I'm just antsy. You know, ants in the pants or whatever it is, we get antsy. When we wait, but God wants us to wait and rest. You know, it's like this, right? When we get to those cell phone charging places and I plug in the phone because my battery is low, what do we do? We still play on our phone, right? I'm still checking apps. I'm still doing all this. When my, char- my phone is being charged, I still go on there. I watch YouTube, whatever I watch, and I'm still using my phone. A time that was meant for recharging, we kept it busy. And then what happens to that? When I pull it out 30 minutes later, guess what? My battery went probably lower. Or it didn't even go any higher. Because a time that was meant for rest and waiting, we decided to fill it and be busy. Wait, rest first, and then renew. In that order. Cannot be at the same time, because then when you unplug that cell phone, your battery will be exactly at the same place. The only time my cell phone really gets recharged is when I plug it in at the end of the night next to my lampstand and I don't touch it for eight hours. That is the only time that my phone gets fully recharged, a time that was meant for recharging and rest. Throughout the day, it's plugged in to any kind of port, my car, my work, my office, my computer, wherever it is, but the battery never gets fully recharged because I'm constantly using it when it's being charged. A time that was meant for rest needs to be just left alone for a second. Now, when I say rest, it doesn't mean that we're going to lock ourselves up in the closet, right, and hide and watch TV and just do nothing. That's not what I'm saying. That's not rest. Sometimes it could be for some of you, right? You want to get lock yourself in the closet. You get some of you people got some prayer closets, which are kind of crazy. But rest can come in many different ways. For example... Going to Disneyland with the family can be restful. That one is for you, PK. Going fishing to your secret spot that you think nobody knows about. That I was just there the week before. (laughs) Or even going to the gym can be restful for you. It can. God will carve out time to allow you to rest. He will set time for you. Whatever that activity God has for you, your responsibility is to ensure you don't allow other distractions to come in. Why do you think people say when they get back from vacation, it's like, oh, I'm exhausted. I need another vacation. Why? Because they chose to allow something else to be part of that vacation. That's why they say it. I say it all the time when I go home to Hawaii. I was like, I need another vacation. This was work. My mom puts me to work. Because I chose to fill it. A time that was meant for rest, other things, other distractions came in. It's because you did not get true rest during that time. They chose to bring other things in. We go on vacation, some of you bring your laptop, your work laptop. He's like, I'm so busy. I got to send this email. I have to. I I have to send this email while I'm at work sitting on the beach with my Mai Tai. Just, Just your halo. Whatever it is. Okay, virgin strawberry daiquiri. There we go. Right? Some of you, we do that. 
Some of us may even allow an offense from a family member, a friend, a coworker to come with you to vacation. Like, I'm going to Ireland, but this offense is coming with me. And we don't get true rest during this time. We don't get to really renew our strength. We have to rest first in order to renew. Amen? Amen. Another way to renew your strength is this, is point number three. It is this, renew the joy of the Lord in you. Renew the joy of the Lord in you. Nehemiah 8.10, it says this, Do not grieve, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. I like that first part, do not grieve. Do not be sad. Do not worry. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Your strength doesn't come from your work, your identity, your position at work, your status outside or how many Instagram followers you have or Facebook followers you have. Your strength does not come from that. And it's because we put our faith in that and our identity in those things. That's why we get sad. That's why we grieve. That's why we cry. But Nehemiah 10 says, don't grieve. Don't worry about that. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, many, for many of us, we have lost our strength because we have lost our joy. The enemy has come in and he's killed our joy. He has stolen our joy. The enemy has come in and because we have lost our joy, we have lost our strength. But there is hope. There is hope. In order to renew our strength, we must give out of our lives by serving in order to rebuild our strength. When we give out of our lives, God is faithful to renew our strength. The heart of new hope is to serve. Why is that? It's because when we serve, we have the joy of the Lord in our life. God is faithful to renew us, restore us, rebuild us, and everything that we do, whatever the enemy has taken from you, God is faithful to replenish. Restore and renew. That is why we serve. That is why the heart of new hope is to serve. Because we understand that is the joy of your strength, is to serve. So go see Mel and serve this Sunday. I need ushers. Go serve. Okay? But that is the heart of new hope, is to serve. For Christ came not to be served, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom. And to mimic that should be a goal of all of ours. He came not to be served, but to serve. To renew your strength. Renew the joy of the Lord in you by serving. By serving. The other part is this. Try that sit and serve technique. The sit and serve technique. Sit and serve. One, sit down in service at 8 o'clock. Serve at 10 o'clock. Sit and serve. Pretty simple concept. Or you can serve at 8 and sit at 10. I'm okay with that too. Since we're adding 12 o'clock service, sit at 10, serve at 12. Sit and serve technique. It's a sit and serve. Pretty simple concept for us to renew the joy of the Lord in you. Practice the sit and serve technique. But sitting can also come a little bit deeper. Not just sitting here, but sitting patiently and waiting on God at home. You can renew your strength by sitting time with the Lord. Jesus went up to the mountains and prayed, and he sat before the Lord all by himself. This is where your prayer wars come in and you sit in your closet and sit and give that personal time to God. This time can be at any time. Sometimes you can pray, Lord, I'm here, I'm listening. If you speak to me, I am listening. If you don't, I thank you anyway. Because this time is yours. Sit before him. Yes, you can sit in service. But your personal reflection time, your personal sitting time with God all alone is just as important. So sit and serve. 
to renew your strength, you have to find refuge first. Find refuge. Find God's presence, God's covering in your life. If you don't want to be uh, attacked by the devil any longer, you know what? Go under God's covering. Find refuge first. And then once you find refuge, wait and rest on him before you can renew. Refuge, wait and resting, in that order. Because if I try to wait and rest out here and here's the refuge, guess what happened? I get attacked on this side. And there is no true rest when you're being attacked by the enemy. There is no true rest. I have never watched a war movie that people are resting when they're being attacked by the enemy. All the famous army movies, Game of Thrones, everything, when you're being attacked by the enemy, there is no rest. There is no rest. We can't allow that to happen. But in order to renew your strength, renew your joy in the Lord. Renew your joy in the Lord. And serve. Sit and serve. 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Sit and serve. Serve him. There's, all of you have special gifts and talents that God has given you. And God is going to provide you an opportunity to highlight those gifts for his kingdom. Whatever it is. You like to draw? I got something for you to draw. You like computers? There's a lot of computers upstairs. You like to tell people what to do? We got ushers. <laughs> Sit and serve for us to renew your strength. In Jesus' name. You guys receive that? Yeah? Amen. Amen. Hey, I got a, a, a couple things that I'm honored and blessed to, uh, to do tonight. Um, but before I do, I, 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 God placed this on my heart for us too. So <clears throat> in terms of our salvation, I'm talking to some of you mature Christians. Um, I think some of us have treated our salvation like the COVID shot. Okay? And let me explain. When COVID hit, everybody was asking for a vaccine. I'm asking for an answer for protection and covering. We need this, we need this vaccine. We need this vaccine. We changed our habits before the vaccine came. We started washing our hands like we're supposed to, right? We started wiping things down. We've been covering our faces. We changed the way we did things in everyday life until this vaccine came. And then when this vaccine came, some of us got it. Two shots in the arm. Now you're all dead armed. But then what happened? Once we got the vaccine, we reverted right back to our old ways. We can't treat our salvation, our relationship with Jesus that way at all. Yes, your salvation is eternal. I get it. But it's misused grace. God gave his life as a sacrifice for you and for me. And we cannot misuse our salvation and that relationship that we have with God. Amen? Can we all stand? And for some of you, you guys online, if you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm making that invitation tonight. And if you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, just raise your hands real quiet. Real quiet. Good. But I think it's important also that we continue to remember what Christ did. Because we can't treat it like the COVID shot. So I'm going to ask all of you, all of you at home, just to repeat after me, just a great refresher. A little salvation. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I repent of my sins. I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. I say this so you can hear me, so the devil can hear me, so my friends can hear me. Jesus, I make you my Lord and Savior. 
In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, anybody online, if that was you for the first time, text in amen and we'll have somebody contact you. But we're not done yet. I have the honor and privilege to uh, do communion uh, with all of you tonight. And it's such an honor and privilege to do this and partake in this. Um, It's not a ceremony. It's not a ritual. It's an outward expression of our relationship with Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross. A sense of thankfulness. And it's so good, and I'm so thankful. Yeah, now we got these fancy ones uh, with a little cup. Saves all the spill marks on the carpet, so we're going to open these things up. You just pop open that top, and there's a little wafer in there for that. Okay. But before we go, I'm going to read you something from Luke. <clears throat> Luke 22, 19. It says this, he took some bread and gave it thanks to God for it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body which is given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ was letting us know that his body was broken for us and what he did on the cross for us as a remembrance of for his goodness, his kindness, his mercy upon our lives. He took the sins upon himself so we can have a right relationship with the Father. So that's why we partake in the body, partake in the bread. The next verse uh, 20 says this, After supper, he took another cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my body, which is poured out as a sacrifice to you. God shed his blood on the cross for us. And I believe there is nothing more powerful than the blood of Christ. It can heal marriages. It can heal your body from cancer. It can restore relationships. It can bring in new blessings. It is the most powerful element in the universe. The blood of Christ. And God is giving it us to us. As remembrance of what he did that is what this is. It's about a relationship with us. This is not a religion. This is not a ceremony. This is not a ritual. It is a relationship with God the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and bled for us. Bled for you. Bled for you. Bled for you. Bled for you at home, online. And that is why we partake of the cup. Go ahead. such an amazing opportunity that we get to partake in communion uh, with God the Father and the relationship that he has with us through his son Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful. And LJ mentioned it tonight when he was talking that God has need of you. God has need of you. In the book of Luke chapter 19, just going a little bit further back, it talks about Jesus coming into Jerusalem. But before he does, he tells his two disciples, hey, go out in the town ahead of you. And in there, you're going to find a coat. Go and untie it. And when somebody asks, what are you doing? You tell them, the Lord needs it. Many of you are tied up by the world, tied up by your job, tied up by your family, tied up by something. And there is people here at New Hope and around the world that are trying to untie you to let you know that God has need of you. He has need of you. When you get untied, and that person who unties you, they're going to take you to Jesus. Don't make that knot tighter. Untie yourself from that post. Because you know what? 
nothing good happen when you're stuck to that post. It is your relationship with Jesus when you get untied by the world and those chains are broken, those chains are coming off of your life and now that you can declare, God, Jesus is your savior. He is your refuge. He is your covering and protection. He has need of you. Not just today, but from this day forward. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for another night, Father God. Thank you for this opportunity that we get to learn on how to renew our strength in you, Father God. That we have the opportunity uh, to be restored and renewed and rebuilt in you, Father God. Because you are faithful. Your everlasting love never runs dry. Your joy never runs dry. Your love never runs dry. Your mercy never runs dry. So Lord, we thank you that we get to come and restore and renew our strength in you. In you and nobody else. Because greater is he who is in me than he is in the world. And when you are renewed and restored by Jesus, he is in you. So Lord, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity, Father God, that we just get to come and worship and glorify you and your kingdom and everything that you have done, everything that you are doing in our lives, Father God. But we love you, we glorify you, and we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hey, New Hope, thank you very much for joining us. Hey, don't forget to come back on Sunday. We get to see Pastor Bam and then register for next week, uh, Easter service. Everybody at home, God bless you. Thank you. May God prosper you. God bless. Shaka. Thank you for joining us. Tune in next week on Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. And next Sunday, for you early birds, we are going to be streaming at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and then again at 12 p.m. For more information and to stay connected to our church family, download our New Hope LV app. Or you can visit our website at newhopelasvegas.com. May God bless you and God prosper you. We can't wait to see you again. In the meantime, keep hope alive.